Warning! This podcast contains themes of extreme violence and murder. Subject matter may be offensive to some listeners. Discretion advised. Welcome to another episode of Evil Transgression, your homicide headquarters here in podcasting. I'm Josh, and with me as always, Dustin and Rex. What's going on? Hey, what's up? Shout out to our Patreon sponsor today. Who we got? Megan. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Megan. So if you want to be cool like Megan, yes, you can join our Patreon too, and we will have details on how you do that at the end of this episode. That we will. Sounds good. It does sound good. (laughs) Now, transition to this. um, That kind of a love story. Maybe, uh, I'll say this. Maybe it's a love story. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just a crazy person. But Mm, I like to think it's possibly a love story. I love love stories. Kind of like uh, a twisted Romeo and Juliet. Now, if you know the story of Romeo and Juliet... They were in love. Star Starcroft lovers. Yes. <laughs> Where um, please do tell us the story you know, of I mean, they, just, <laughs> they just couldn't be together, right? They yeah. loved each other, but right. just yeah. So I, that's how I kind of think of this story. I might be dead wrong, but that's how it makes me feel. <laughs> so you did cried you, at the end? Possibly. Okay. Did you ever uh did you see the remake of Romeo and Juliet with Claire Danes and Leonardo? Oh DiCaprio? yeah. No. Yeah, back, that was back in the 90s. It was. Um, my older sister took me to see that, her and her. I can't remember. We uh, we went with somebody, and I was like, I'll go. And uh, I was really disappointed the fact that they were not speaking like we speak. Oh, <laughs> they yeah. Were it was talking old like English. English. <laughs> yeah. Like, if we're for out. <laughs> like, what is this I'm watching? Like, you're carrying Glocks, but saying <laughs> stuff like that. It's weird. <laughs> it was different. I was more of a... Uh, have you ever, uh, now I'm going to take you down a trip, like, way old, like, um, West Side Story. Did you ever see West Side Story? No. It was like a play off of Romeo and Juliet musical. Oh, yeah. Loved it. It was amazing. <laughs> I swear, it was amazing. Loved was it, it. Was that the 60s? Yeah. Like, 50s, 60s. Yeah, it was definitely an older one. When you're a jet, you're a jet all the way. You know, yeah, you can stop that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways... Um, so this episode has nothing to do with Broadway, right? <laughs> no, no, no. It just, to me, it reminds me of kind of like a... Didn't they make twisted. a movie with, uh, what's her name, Julia Stiles? Remember that movie, O? Wasn't that like Romeo and Juliet type? Never seen it. Yeah, I don't uh, know. After, after the remake of Romeo and Juliet with Claire Danes and Leonardo <laughs> DiCaprio, I'm stuck. <laughs> it's like, I'm not watching any more of this. I, I'm not saying this was an actual remake of that, but I think it had like something to do with it. Hmm. It could be wrong. Somebody will let me know. I'll they check will. it out. Hopefully you're dead wrong. That. I, I know. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> you stupid idiot. <laughs> All right. So if you guys are ready. Yes. We can discuss Martha Wise. So you ready? Let's do it. I mean, you gave me a look like, huh? What happened? <laughs> Whose day is it? Let's do it. Let's do it. He hasn't had his coffee yet this morning. Okay. All right. So buckle up, evil mob. As we discuss Martha Wise. Martha Wise was born Martha Hazel in 1884 in a small town in Ohio called Hardscrabble. Martha was one of five children born to Sophie Hazel and her husband, who we don't know his first name, both of whom were farmers. We'll just call him Mr. Hazel. Mr. Hazel. Perfect. Growing up on the farm was an uneventful and boring life for Martha with lots of hard work. In 1906, Martha attended a box social where she met Albert Wise. What's a box social? Now, a box social in those times was an event where the women would prepare a meal for two and the men would bid on those boxes not knowing who made them. Kind of like uh, the early 1900s tender. 
Oh, nice. That actually sounds kind of cool. It is like you just walk around and you're looking at these mills like, who made the steak? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and bid on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's like a two for one. Like you, you realize what you're getting. So you get the food and the girl. Yeah, I mean, it's, okay. it's like you're bidding on a blind date. Oh, but fair. you're also bidding on a meal. Like, right? Mm. Like I'm not eating that potato salad. It does not look <laughs> healthy. No bid there. It's been sitting in the sun all day. <laughs> that is kind of cool, though. That is kind of a win win, though, because if you like. If you bid on it and the food's good and you get the girl, and she's cute. You're like, you're going to try and make she, it work. She yeah. can cook. Mm-hmm. You bid, you bid on it and the food is garbage and the girl looks okay. You're going to be like, oh, I don't really know. She, <laughs> she can't cook, but I can't just run to McDonald's. <laughs> <Yeah. Like. laughs> they didn't got McDonald's at this time. <laughs> so, um, Albert bid on Martha's box, no pun intended, and <laughs> the, the two began a relationship. Martha figured that even though Albert was 20 years her senior, he had to be a better option than living at home with her parents. They would marry later that year. However, Albert never did give her a ring. That's not a good sign. No. Martha finally had her chance to get away from her family farm and become a wife. The problem was, Albert had his own farm, and his idea of a loving wife was more like having a farmhand to help around the property. The 50-acre property was a lot more work, and Martha found herself in an unhappy marriage doing more work than she had when she lived at home with her parents. There was no rest for Martha either. She was forced to work even while pregnant with the couple's first child, Albert Jr. Now, when I say work, she was out plowing fields and taking care of the animals on the farm. Jeez, that's crazy. So she was definitely working harder than a lot of people you may know today. Oh, for sure. Reminds me of, uh, remember planes, trains, and automobiles? (laughs) Yeah. When they they roll up in the truck and he's (laughs) like, get out and get their (laughs) luggage. She's like nine months pregnant throwing their (laughs) stuff in. That's that's horrible though. Like I know yeah, she's is. pregnant. He's like, go out there and plow the fields. Mm-hmm. You know they didn't have John Deere's back then. Yeah, true. Albert Jr. would not survive infancy, but that did not stop the couple from having more children. Martha and Albert would eventually have four more children: Everett, Gertrude, Kenneth, and Lester. In between farm work and having babies, Martha was also prone to the beatings of our Albert as well. So he's one of those guys. He is a, mm. He's a real piece of work. Yeah, it sounds like Makes it. Makes you wish that he didn't bid on that box. <laughs> yes. Now again, Martha was not living her dream for sure. When all you do is farm work, you have to find something to do in any spare time that you have. So this dude couldn't hire like farm work from somebody else other than his wife? Maybe he didn't have the money. I don't know. Hmm. He's, I mean, either way, the dude's, a, the dude's a jerk. Right. But, uh, so wh- what's Martha going to do on her free times, right? She's going to attend funerals. So immediately, funerals. yeah, immediately you think, wow, she must have alone, known a lot of people who were dying off in the town, right? That's not necessarily the case. Hmm. Martha would attend pretty much all the funerals in a hard scrabble, whether she knew the person who had died or not. She rarely missed an opportunity to attend the funeral. It's like a hobby. Mm. She just liked attending funerals. Mm, that's weird. It's like an old school wedding crasher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, I, I don't even like going to funerals of people no. that I know. Right, yeah, me too. This lady's like, well, Steve died over in Hard Scrabble, North Hard Scrabble. I need to go to his <laughs> funeral. He's like, who the hell is Steve? And they're like, I don't know, but I need to go. <laughs> I gotta go. So, uh, in 1923, she got to attend a funeral of someone she did know, her husband Albert, who had died suddenly, leaving Martha a widow at 40 years old. After Albert's death, Martha's weird behavior became even more weird. She still attended funerals of people she didn't know, but now she would make a scene by crying and mourning for the deceased, even if she didn't know the person. Wow. This earned her the nickname of Weeping Martha Wise among residents of Hardscrabble. Mm-hmm. I like that nickname. Yeah, it's nice. Weeping Martha Wise? Yeah. Weeping Martha. Weeping. 
Martha Wise was not one to be alone. She wouldn't waste any time finding another male companion. Within one year of Albert's death, Martha met a man by the name of Walter Johns. Walter Johns was a farmhand on an adjacent farm from Martha. Martha and Walter hit it off, and the two began a relationship. The relationship was not a big hit with Martha's mother, Sophie, or her aunt, Lily Ginky. I mean, it's got to be more of a hit than, you know, her previous husband yeah, right. beat her and made her work in the field and mm-hmm. nine, nine months pregnant. pregnant. Well, I... Uh, you know, they don't really go into detail on what the main problem was with that. I, I could only think maybe, you know, uh, she's in this relationship with a guy that they probably look down on that, oh, he's a farmhand. He doesn't own the farm. Like right. Oh, uh, gotcha. Or maybe yeah, it's Yeah, but just, he don't beat her ass. This doesn't say. So yeah. there's always that. I'd rather, you know. Mm-hmm. Well... Again, these might be people like, she probably deserved it. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> True. But I'm with you. I mean, love is love, right? Love wins. It does. Conquers Most all. Most times. <laughs> <laughs> so this put an awful strain on the relationship with Martha and Walter. Martha tried her best to keep everyone happy, but her aunt and her mother were relentless, and eventually Martha would call off the relationship by the end of 1924. With that, Walter Johns would move away to Cleveland, and the heartbroken Martha Wise was once again alone. It's horrible. Mm-hmm. It is. Yeah, you know, she was. I don't know what's worse: the fact that he left her, or that he moved to Cleveland. <laughs> yeah, be a Browns that. fan. Hey, oh no! Be enough of that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Same. Be it. That's enough. Or we'll do another. You guys episode. are about to fight. <laughs> So, uh, on Thanksgiving of 1924, Martha and her extended family sat down for a feast. Shortly after, several members of the family became violently ill, including her mother, Sophie. The others would recover, but Martha's mother, Sophie, would get worse and die on December 13th, 1924. That is not good. Not at all. Nope. Martha finally had another meaningful funeral to attend, however. But Martha's tragedies were not over. On New Year's Eve, several more members of Martha's family became violently ill again. This time, her Aunt Lily Ginky, her husband Frank, and several of their children were the victims. Again, many of them would recover, but Lily and her husband Frank would not. Mm. They were both dead by February of 1925. So, by the fall of 1925, a total of 17 family members had fallen ill from the same illnesses. Four of the Ginky children were ultimately left partially paralyzed from the mystery illness. Jeez. That's, uh, brutal. Uh, yeah. I don't, well, what, I ever, what I never understand about these poisoning cases is... Well, we haven't got to that. You're jumping to conclusions. <laughs> what? <laughs> just because these people got sick doesn't mean anything. I, I'm just saying what I don't understand is how there's always the one person that's never sick and everybody, <laughs> but else, everybody is, else but they don't ever right. think like, oh, well, yeah. what about this? Maybe this person's doing it. Yeah. Maybe it's not Martha's bean dip that did it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> After the death of Frank and Lily and the partial paralyzation of four of their children, authorities decided to take a closer look at the situation, which might not be a bad idea at this point. Mm -hmm. I mean, here you have a young widow who is known around town to get her kicks at funerals, (laughs) and everyone around her is getting sick and dying. Should be a red flag. (laughs) Can you see the giant red flag? (laughs) Yeah. When uh, Fred Rashawn, the county sheriff, looked into the matter, he found some suspicious activity from Martha. Martha had signed for a few large quantities of arsenic at the local pharmacy, so she had made an arsenic purchase more than once. Mm. She doesn't know the definition of don't leave a paper trail. Well, now nope. this alone doesn't make her guilty. Arsenic was used by farmers to kill rats on the farms. Mm. Martha has 50 acres, remember. Right. 
But after an autopsy on Aunt Lily, it was discovered she had a large amount of arsenic in her digestive system. Mm, uh Uh-oh. Now you may have a crime. Yep. Martha Wise was brought in for questioning where she in fact stated she had purchased the arsenic to kill rats on the farm. See, like I said, she's got to be innocent. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Mm. sure. Nope. Finally, Martha Wise broke down and admitted she had poisoned the family by putting the arsenic in the water buckets and coffee pots the family drank out of. Mm. On March 23rd, 1925, despite confessing to the crimes, Martha Wise pleaded not guilty to the grand jury. What? She then went on to tell them that she was obsessed with funerals, and when there was not enough happening in the community, she had to kill in order to create some to attend. (laughs) Who does that? She just said she was not guilty and then tells him, like, well, I had to do it. <laughs> Martha, that's not going to get you out of this one. No. Martha was then indicted on first-degree murder on April 7th, 1925, and the murder trial began. The defense would take the criminally insane path and try to get Martha off with insanity. They claim Martha was made to kill her family on orders of a former lover named Walter Johns. Poor Walter Johns is in Cleveland, Uh (laughs) minding his own business. (laughs) But this defense fell apart when two witnesses that were to testify on her behalf didn't make the trial. Her sister-in-law, Edith, had committed suicide, and her husband, Frank, who was Martha's brother, had collapsed and become ill. Mm. This time, it wasn't Martha, though. Like She wasn't involved in that one. Wow. The prosecution did have witnesses, though. Three of the Genki children and Martha's own son, Lester, testified against her. After one hour of deliberation, the jury found Martha Wise guilty of first-degree murder. They wasted no time. Nope. The jury did, however, plead with the judge to show mercy when sentencing her for some reason. The judge, apparently taking the advice of his jury, did not give Martha the death penalty, but instead life in prison. In 1962, after serving several years in prison at the Marysville Women's Reformatory, Martha Wise would catch a break. Ohio Governor Michael DeSalle, who was against capital punishment and had commuted several prisoners' sentences, commuted Martha Wise's sentence. She was paroled at the age of 79. What? Dang. Yeah. She never should have gotten out. The problem was, none of her remaining family had anything to do with her, so nobody took her in. Good. With no family help, she tried to enter into several homes for the elderly, who also had nothing to do with her because of her violent past. So she's got nowhere to go. They're like, family's like, we ain't taking that crazy no, lady. Uh, no way. <laughs> so she goes to like, uh, what is it, like, Sunset, uh, Sunset palaces for the elderly and they're like can't come here that's a that's a that's a that's a terrible thing yeah. that would be awful but she kind of deserved yeah, it that's what she gets so uh we're with nowhere else to go martha returned to the marysville women's reformatory where she would live out the rest of her life Hold on. She so, willingly went back there? She willing, She had to. She had nowhere else to go. She just walked I, in and said, hey, take I, me back in. I know, but th- will they do that? If you ain't got nowhere to go, they'll be like, yeah, come on in. Come stay. She was like, hey, you got you to gotta let me back in? Because when you get paroled, there's certain guidelines you have to follow in a certain time, right? Yeah. 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 yeah so I, maybe she just said, hey, I can't, I can't do this. And they were like, all right, we'll get your bunk ready. <laughs> <laughs> Martha Wise died on June 28th, 1971, at the age of 86. Wow, dang. So my real question to you fellows, which ties in the beginning of this episode, do you think Martha killed her family members because she liked funerals that much? Or do you think her main targets were her mother and her Aunt Lily, who had forced her to end a relationship with Walter Johns? Hmm. I think a lot of it had to do with Walter Johns. I think yeah, so too. I think she was trying to get even. I think she did it because she liked funerals that much. Really? Yeah. She attended funerals of people that she didn't even know. 
that was her hobby. Like, really I know. nothing else to do. You know? <laughs> I know, but you know, she maybe life in hard scrabble was tough. You maybe know? there was maybe. nothing at all to do yeah. other than go visit funerals. Well, there's so much not to do in hard scrabble that I've lived in Ohio for 30 years and I've never heard of hard scrabble. <laughs> but what do we say, Medina County? Or something like that. Medina, Medina. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't know. I I tend to in my heart want to believe that it was because of Walter Johns because that's that Romeo and Juliet yeah, spin yep. makes sense yeah. she was There's like that. I love him so much and you won't let me be with him <laughs> <laughs> drink this coffee <laughs> drink this coffee drink this coffee but the die. thing is I think she tried just did it for funerals because she didn't you know she didn't know who was gonna die from drinking it she poisoned everybody I think if it was just them she would've but she a hey, she got the two that was responsible. She yeah. did. I mean, Frank was just the uh, collateral damage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. Uncle well, Frank's got to go too. And four partially paralyzed children also collateral damage. Uh, yeah, right. big time. Horrible, none of the less. So, right. Yeah. But that is the story of Martha Wise. Mm, a little crazy. A tad. Now wait till uh, I showed you guys a picture of this lady. Uh huh. Wait till. You and the evil mom get to see Martha Wise. Oh, yeah. She looks she evil. Is, She's scary. She, she does. You can look at her and be like, yeah, she did it. Oh, She's yeah. a killer. Easily. Funerals or not, she's a maniac. 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 What's wrong with this guy? Uh, <laughs> what do you got for me, Rex? Well, if you've not done this yet, go to Facebook and give us a like. If you have any questions, ideas, comments, you can email us at eviltransgression at gmail.com. And I don't think we've had a question lately, so please send us a question and we will answer it on the following episode. True that. True that. You can also go to eviltransgression.com and join our Patreon. Do it. And check out our store and all that good stuff. And we might have something new coming to Patreon soon. We'll let you know. Mmm little added incentive for mm-hmm. Patreon, huh? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Do we have the, the new Evil Mob shirt up yet? We do, don't we? Yes. We do. That's what I thought. Um, we got some pretty cool shirts out now. Mm-hmm. There's more than just like the two that we used to have. Yep. Yep. Moving on up. We are. Some fancy ones. <laughs> I think I only need like one to complete my collection. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I think Stacy might need one or two more, but she's got a bunch. What I think we should do is everybody that has an uh, uh, evil transgression shirt. Take a picture and send it to us? Yeah. Take a picture of yourself. Send it to us. We'll make a collage and put it up on eviltransgression.com. Yes. That would be awesome. That would be sweet. That would be cool. Mm Mm-hmm. Do it. And just title it The Evil Mob. Yeah. Perfect. Do it. Do it. If you don't have your shirt and you want to be part of this picture, you know where to go. Yeah. That's right. You don't want to be that guy or that girl. <laughs> but you, if you also want to be like Megan, join the Patreon. Yep, that's true. That'll help. Because only cool kids are like Megan. <laughs> um, that's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah, I don't have anything. So, with that being said, until next week, Evil Mob. See ya. See ya. Peace. <laughs>